name. There you go. Good. If I could have everybody's attention here in the media center, we are now joined by Clint Boyer, driver of the number 15 five hour energy Chevrolet, the pride of Emporia, Kansas here back at Kansas Speedway. What's it like for you to come back and, and, and get such a warm response from the people here in Kansas City? Well, I mean, it's always fun to come back here. It's important to come back here. This is home. Um, you know, a big race weekend for everybody. It always hosts such a great event here. Um, you know, Pat and, and everybody, it just they, they put on a good show. They're, this is a neat area for everybody in a garage area. What's become of this thing? Um, you know, shopping, casino, restaurants. I mean, there's, there's other sporting venues over here, all, all within walking distance for a fan, and then cap it all off with a great race on Sunday. I mean, you just can't ask for a better sporting complex in an area to put on an event like this. Good deal. Let's uh, open the floor for questions. We'll start with uh, Claire in the back and work our way around. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Coming back to Kansas, knowing all that's on the line for the Chasers, knowing where you're going next year, I think everybody really wants to know where Clint Boyer is at competitively, uh, how you feel about where you're going, where you'll be there, and where you're at now. There's just a lot happening with you, and we'd like to hear it. Well, I mean, certainly, you know, it's, it's always natural to start thinking about next year. You better be. You know, this time of year, no matter if you're moving or, or staying the same, nothing changes. You've got to be, you know, that's how far in advance you have to look in this sport and work. Um, all the organizations are, are lining themselves up and, and gearing up for next year. All the while, there's a lot of racing left to do, you know, in 2016. So, you know, last weekend is a prime example. I look over and I see all, all the Stuart Haas cars up front qualified well. Danica was, was fast. All, all the cars raced well. You know, those are the things that you look at and get excited for, you know, for next year. But, hey, um, you got an opportunity to come back home and race and compete in front of your hometown crowd. Like I said, there's, there's plenty of racing to do and, and things to accomplish this year. Um, you know, we got to cap it off, off well and, and uh, um, you know, starting to, to get, you know, focused on next year. But it, it is exciting. You get emails, you know, as like I was telling somebody last night, an email come across my phone and I look over and it's, it's 14 merchandise, you know, approvals for next year. You're like, holy cow, it's, it's becoming reality, you know, and, and uh, it's fixing uh, to pick up in a big way. Well, I think that that's uh, it's a good fit because I think we know there's two of him too. <laughs> I think it would be a perfect role that I, for me to work into. Uh, just a great outfit over there. Everybody from the top to the bottom, um, the teammates. You know, uh, I've worked with Kevin for many years. Um, you know, looking forward to Kurt. Kurt's the one that I've never really known a lot about. I always raced against him, but never worked with him in any way, shape, or form. Um, Danica, you know, I'm. Um, closer to her than probably you know some of the others so just uh i'm looking forward to it it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be a neat atmosphere and, and something that uh you know what 10 years into this thing you, you know one of the best opportunities ever is is uh you know at your doorstep and and uh, fixing to happen so it's pretty pretty cool okay go up front the pat pat to and nascar.com apart from merchandise sales uh, what sort of discussions and preparation have you guys had for next year so far well, I mean, those conversations started months ago, you know, with Booga, the crew chief. I mean, that's that's the neat thing about it is, you know, I didn't have to, to call and, and say, all right, you know, what, what are we doing here? What's the game plan? What's, you know, what people, what do I need to do? You know, it's always, you know, having to take care of, of everything, you know, and, and it's finally going to be a relief to just show up and, and, and be a part of a team and, and, and you know, do your job and, and that job when one and only job is to drive that race car to the best of your ability and get the most out of it. Um, you know, obviously being a good teammate, being a good, uh, um, you know, spokesperson for your sponsors and partners and stuff like that is, is always uh, um, a big thing of what we do, a big part of, of what we do in this, this world. But, um, you know, just, just looking forward to uh, being in a situation where you can, you can go out and, and know, uh, um, you know, that if, if the equipment's there and, and you know, that, that you'll have a good weekend, you know, and, and it's, that's, that's all you can ask for as a race car driver. Go next to Katie, then to Blair, then we'll go in the back. Katie Williams, Speedway Digest. Um, 
it rained, it misted or rained this morning. Talk about how your practice went and also track conditions out there. Yeah, it was uh, through everybody for a loop, you know. I, even me being from Kansas, you know, don't expect, you know, consistency in Kansas. It never works, you know. It's just like we, we had our charity event last night. The night before, wind was straight out of the north, blowing right in the back doors of our, our uh, you know, building that we have. And I'm thinking, man, we won't be able to have quite as neat an, a, an event as, as I was hoping for. Um, and then last night, it was beautiful outside, no wind, and, you know, had people inside and outside and all over. You know, you just never know. Then you wake up from that, and, uh, hell, I drove the, the motor home up this morning and in a light rain mist all the way here and you're thinking man are we even going to get started on time and uh um, we did track was extremely fast you know the mist was out of here and, and you can kind of see the sun burning through right now but uh, uh i look for hopefully those clouds kind of stay there that'll help the track stay consistent as we move into qualifying there's more rubber getting on the track as we speak right now with the xfinity cars so all these things are going to play a role as these teams are trying to calculate what to do to their setups and their cars to make sure that they maintain the speed where they're out on the charts if not you know better them we'll go to blair then to karen then to david and the rick clint uh, blair kirkhoff with the kansas city star kind of a bummer no royals in the postseason i guess huh uh, yeah, it is. You know, it's it's always uh, it's always fun, and and you know, just a lot of a great deal of pride um, goes into the to their you know last couple of years, especially have just been awesome. And this year was. I mean, obviously um, they had a rough stretch, man, and it just couldn't get it turned around in time. But uh, you know, there was a lot of reasons. I think it wasn't it wasn't necessarily just their fault you know you have you have injuries you have people uh you know get hurt and are, are sidelined and i think that uh plagued them for uh, you know a long time and you know i think you know anytime anytime you show up to a ballpark and there's a guy with a jacked up jeep with a moose mount on the on the top of it i would say he's a key player and when you lose a key player you lose the energy and and uh you know that's not only on the field it's it's all the way through right hey i just wanted to ask you what are your feelings about the chase structure? You know, the chase is so important to our sport. Um, it's it's a really difficult thing. If it's if it's on your side and it's working your way that year, it's a, it's a hell of a thing. If it's not, it's a hell of a thing. You know, it's it's just one of those things to where, you know, you look at at Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin last last week. You know, potentially a, a part failure could could ruin their whole season you know there is that side of it but then you look at another guy um jimmy johnson you know that gets thrown out of the out of the thing put back in and then <laughs> wins the race and he's on to the next round you just there's a lot of things there that that uh um that can happen in in a short amount of time and it's a it's a hard thing i would think for a sanctioning body to try to to make it uh um you know on a level playing field for everybody um, because it's a time of the year where, you know, all gloves are off. You have to push as hard as you can. You have to get the most out of every single thing. Um, all the season long, you're, you're making a notebook of everything you could possibly get away with, and then all of a sudden, now all the, all the marbles are on the line, and you've got to, uh, you got to put it out there. You've got to take those chances, and, and you know, they're, it's just a, it's a wild, crazy. There's so many moving parts to what make these cars such a simple concept, you know, back in the day. It's, it's amazing what engineering has done to this sport and, and uh, to these race cars. I mean, it's, it's old technology, you know, truck arms. I mean, they've been on a, on a Chevrolet pickup, you know, since the 70s, you know, 60s. And, and then uh, you, uh, you take that and, and all the things that we're doing, you know, with a simple rear end concept that we've had for years. And it's just, it's, it's unbelievable what these teams do with, with that concept. Hi, Clint, I've got two. Um, one is, do they drive different then? If it's up for all the marbles, we're at this point in the chase, is there a difference in the way drivers handle the track and the intensity? And the other thing is, who's got the bigger crowd, you or Carl, since you both call this home track? Well, I mean, certainly, uh, you know, Carl's compete for a championship. I would, I would hope that, uh, you know, my fans included are, are rooting for him, you know, being a, the local guy and, and uh, you know, a fan favorite here for all of us. You know, I, I know he wants to win here just as bad as I do. And I know that, uh, you know, a, a win here would catapult him into a shot at a championship. So, um, 
you know, I, I like Carl. He's always been a lot of fun. I remember the first time I ever met Carl and raced against him. It's just one of those things. So you respect a guy like that, and, and you appreciate him, his talents and abilities on the racetrack, and he'll win. You know, he's going to win here one of these days. You just hope you can beat him to it. You can't, you can't possibly sell the, the level of intensity, the level of, of competition within this chase. Um, it, is, it is insane. It, there's so much pressure. And now you look at these teams, that, that one little wreck, you know, one little miscue last weekend, you got five teams that are you know, racing for one position. I mean, that level of intensity is, is through the roof. You know, their level of anxiety, whether it's the race car driver, the tire changer, the crew chief, the engineer, all the way across the board, those guys got to be at their very best. And if they're not, they're going to be out and miss another year's chance at a championship. Um, the way that thing is, man, you just can't miss. You know, inside this chase, one, one little mishap and you're, you're done. And there's going to be somebody else in your, you know, your place. David Scott from the Charlotte Observer. Clint, knowing this has been a bridge year for you and, and looking ahead to next year, what kind of challenge has that been for you? in the car this year in terms of, I mean, it's gotta be tough to. You know, I guess the biggest thing about it is you, you have to find things out of anything in life that, that you can, you can uh, you know, use as an advantage. And, and for me, I've learned a lot, man. This, this sport's hard, you know, it's so competitive. Um, don't know that, I, I guess you can say, you know, you take things for granted sometimes and, and uh, you know, speed and, and uh, um, you know, competition is, is certainly one of those things. When you're in cars that are, you know, running up front, it's the easiest thing ever. You get in something, you know, you're running back there in that 20th place land, and I, it opened my eyes to how hard those guys are driving back there. And, and you know, it's there is no – you give and take up front, and, and it's the way I've always driven, you know, let a, let a spot go, you're going to get it later, next pit stop. You know, this extra rounder wedge is going to get me right back and I'll get around him. No big deal. We got a long race. Back there, every position, every spot, whether it's on pit road, whether it's on a restart, whether it's 20 laps into a run, you can't afford to give anything up. Um, you know, it's, it's extremely difficult to race, you know, in that mid-pack land. And, uh, um, you know, I'm looking forward to using that, you know. I, I, I think you've, I've learned a lot from the racing on the racetrack, and I've learned a lot, you know, about myself, too. It's, 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 uh, this isn't easy. And, um, you know, I think you're, hopefully, we can get back in here and there's going to be these, these seats filled again. When we talked in, uh, and I got a damn beer in my hand because the trophy's sitting right there, right? That's what we do this for. Clint, we talked in January. You knew this was going to be a tough year and a big adjustment. Has it been tougher than you thought it would be? Going well, of, of course it has. You know, I mean, I've, I've never struggled like this. You know what I mean? And, and I take some of that blame, too. You know, I mean, it's, it's not – it's, it's – it's not one thing. It's it's so many different things that go into these race cars. I mean, it's just amazing. I used to race down there and win championships and, and win races, and you'd pull in there, and didn't matter what happened. I knew I was going to win. If it was a little bit off or, or whatever else, a little, you know, more wedge than I needed to be, drop the track bar a little bit more than I wanted, didn't matter. I knew I was going to win. And, you know, it's, it's a situation where um, – you know, you, those roles reverse, and you don't have the upper hand on those guys, and it's it's a it's a hell of a challenge, you know. And that's where we're at right now. But I think you know when you get uh, hopefully get in a situation where where you those doubts and those things are out, you know, you get those gremlins out of your head, and you can compete compete at at the level that you know you're capable of. Clint Greg Eklund, Kansas Public Radio. Even though this year is not over and there's a lot of talk about next year, how do you think you'll look back on this year? Oh, I think, you know, again, you know, you, you got to use it. You know, it doesn't matter what comes at you. It, it doesn't matter how low you're running or how good you run. You got to be able to take something out of this. And I, like I said earlier, I mean, I got a lot that I'm going to be able to take out of this year and learn for. And, and it, whether that's on the racetrack or off the racetrack, you know, there's been a lot of good things happen. I mean, I watched my little boy. Uh, you know, starting to grow up, and now he'll he'll call you daddy and, and say, you know, come on, you know, let's go to the let's go to the, the playground. Those things have changed for me, 
you know, <laughs> going to the playground in between practice sessions is something new for me. Um, but but it's you know it's it's just uh, there's been a lot of good things happen this year, and unfortunately, you know, the results on a racetrack wasn't one of those. Well, Clint, thanks for taking the time thanks, to join guys. us today. Good luck this weekend.